Okay. Horrid Henry's car journey. Henry, we're waiting. Henry, get down here. Henry, I'm warning you. <laughs> Horrid Henry sat on his bed and scowled. His mean, horrible parents could warn him all they liked. He wasn't moving. Henry, we're going to be late, yelled Mum. Good, shouted Henry. Henry, this is your final warning, yelled Dad. I don't want to go to Polly's, screamed Henry. I want to go to Ralph's birthday party. Mum stomped upstairs. Well, you can't, said Mum. You're coming to the christening and that's that. No, screeched Henry. I hate Polly, I hate babies and I hate you. Henry had been a page boy at the wedding of his cousin, Prissy Polly, when she'd married Pimply Paul. Now they had a Prissy Pimply baby, vomiting Vera. Henry had met Vera once before and she'd thrown up all over him. Henry had hoped never to see her again until she was grown up and behind bars, but no such luck. He had to go and watch her be dunked in a vat of water on the same day that Ralph was having a birthday party at Goose Shooter World. Chapter 2 Henry had been longing for ages to go to Goose Shooter World. Today was his chance, his only chance. But no... Everything was ruined. Perfect Peter poked his head round the door. I'm all ready, Mum, said Perfect Peter. His shoes were polished, his teeth were brushed and his hair neatly combed. I know how annoying it is to be kept waiting when you're in a rush. Thank you, darling Peter, said Mum. At least one of my children knows how to behave. Horrid Henry roared and attacked. He was a swooping vulture digging his claws into a dead mouse. Ah! squealed Peter. Stop being horrid, Henry, said Mum. No one told me it was today, squeaked Henry. Yes, we did, said Mum, but you weren't paying attention. As usual, said Dad. I knew we were going, said Peter. I don't want to go to Polly's, screamed Henry. I want to go to Ralph's. Get in the car, now, said Dad. Or no TV for a year, said Mum. Ah! Horrid Henry stopped wailing. No TV for a year? Anything was better than that. Grimly, he stomped downstairs and out the front door. They wanted him in the car. They'd have him in the car. Don't slam the door, said Mum. Slam. Horrid Henry pushed Peter away from the car door and scrambled for the right-hand side behind the driver. Perfect Peter grabbed his legs and tried to climb over him. Victory. Henry got there first. Henry liked sitting on the right hand side so he could watch the speedo speedometer. Peter liked sitting on the right hand side so he could watch the speedometer. Mum, said Peter, it's my turn to sit on the right. No it isn't, said Henry, it's mine, mine, mine. We haven't even left and already you're fighting, said Dad. You'll take turns, said Mum. You can swap after we stop. Vroom, vroom, Dad started the car. The door's locked. Chapter 3. Horrid Henry was trapped. But wait, was there a glimmer of hope? Was there a teeny tiny chance? What was it Mum always said when he and Peter were squabbling in the car? If you don't stop fighting, I'm going to turn around and go home and wasn't home just exactly where he wanted to be. All he had to do was to do what he did best. Could I have a story tape please, said Perfect Peter. 
No, I want a music tape, said Horry Henry. I want Mouse Goes to Town, said Peter. I want Driller Cannibals, greatest hits, said Henry. Story, music, story, music. Smack, smack, wah! Stop it, Henry, said Mum. Tell Peter to leave me alone, screamed Henry. Tell Henry to leave me alone, screamed Peter. Leave each other alone, said Mum. Horrid Henry glared at Perfect Peter. Perfect Peter glared at Horrid Henry. Horrid Henry stretched slowly, steadily, centimetre by centimetre. He spread out into Peter's area. Henry's on my side. No, I'm not. Henry, leave Peter alone, said Dad. I mean it. I'm not doing anything, said Henry. Are we there yet? No, said Dad. Thirty seconds passed. Are we there yet? said Tori Henry. No, said Mum. Are we there yet? said Tori Henry. No, screamed Mum and Dad. We only left ten minutes ago, said Dad. Ten minutes! Horrid Henry felt as if they'd been travelling for hours. Chapter four. Are we a quarter of the way there yet? No! Are we halfway there yet? No! How much longer until we're halfway there? Stop it, Henry, screamed Mum. You're driving me crazy, screamed Dad. Now be quiet and leave us alone, Henry sighed. Boy, was this boring. Why didn't they have a decent car with built-in video games, movies and a jacuzzi? That's just what he'd have if, when he was king. Softly, he started to hum under his breath. Henry's humming. Stop being horrid, Henry. I'm not doing anything, protested Henry. He lifted his foot. Mum, squealed Peter. Henry's kicking me. Are you kicking him, Henry? Not yet, muttered Henry. Then he screamed. Mum, Peter's looking out of my window. Dad, Henry's looking out of my window. Peter breathed on me. Henry's breathing loud on purpose. Henry's staring at me. Peter's on my side. Tell him to stop, screamed Henry and Peter. Mum's face was red. Dad's face was red. That's it, screamed Dad. I can't take this anymore, screamed Mum. Yes, thought Henry, we're going to turn back home. Chapter 5 But instead of turning round, the car screeched to a halt at the motorway services. We're going to take a break, said Mum. She looked exhausted. Who needs a wee, said Dad. He looked even worse. Me, said Peter. Henry? No, said Henry. He wasn't a baby. He knew when he needed a wee and he didn't need one now. This is our only stop, Henry, said Mum. I think you should go. No, screamed Henry. Several people looked up. I'll wait in the car. Mum and Dad were too tired to argue. They disappeared into the services with Peter. Rats! Despite his best efforts, he looked like Mum and, it looked like Mum and Dad were going to carry on. Well, if he couldn't make them turn back, maybe he could delay them somehow. Suddenly, Henry had a wonderful, spectacular idea.
It couldn't be easier and it was guaranteed to work. He'd miss the christening. <coughs> Mum, Dad and Peter got back in the car. Mum drove off. I need a wee, said Henry. Not now, Henry. I need a wee, screamed Henry. Now? Mum headed back to the services. Dad and Henry went to the toilets. I'll wait for you outside, said Dad. Hurry up or we'll be late. <coughs> late! What a lovely word. Henry went into the toilet and locked the door. Then he waited and waited and waited. Finally, he heard Dad's grumpy voice. Henry, have you fallen down that toilet? Henry rattled the door. Um, I'm locked in, said Henry. The door's stuck. I can't get out. <coughs> Try, Henry pleaded Dad. I have, said Henry. I guess they'll have to break the door down. That should take a few hours. He settled himself on the toilet seat and got out a comic. Or you could just crawl underneath the partition into the next stool, said Dad. Oh! Henry could have burst into tears. Wasn't it just his rotten luck to try to get locked in a toilet which, which had gaps on the sides? Henry didn't much fancy wriggling around on the cold floor. Sighing, he gave the stall door a tug and opened it. Chapter 6. Horrid Henry sat in silence for the rest of the trip. He was so depressed he didn't even protest when Peter demanded his turn on the right. Plus, he felt car sick. Henry rolled down his window. Mum, said Peter, I'm cold. Dad turned the heat on. Having the heat on makes me feel sick, said Henry. I'm going to be sick, whimpered Peter. I'm going to be sick, whined Henry. But we're almost there, screeched Mum. Can't you just hold on until... Peter threw up all over Mum. Henry threw up all over Dad. The car pulled into the driveway. Mum and Dad staggered out of the car to Polly's front door. Oh, we survived, said Mum, mopping her dress. Thank goodness that's over, said Dad, mopping his shirt. Horrid Henry scuffed his feet sadly behind them. Despite all his hard work, he'd lost the battle. While Rude Ralph and Dizzy Dave and Jolly Josh were dashing about spraying each other with green goo, later this afternoon he'd be stuck at a boring party with lots of grown-ups yakety yak yakking. Oh, misery. Ding dong! The door opened. It was Prissy Polly. She was in her bathrobe and slippers. She carried a stinky smelling wailing baby over her shoulder. Pimply Paul followed. He was wearing a filthy t-shirt with sit down the front. Ugh, squeaked Polly. Mum tried to look as if she had not been through hell and barely lived to tell the tale. We're here, said Mum brightly. How's the lovely baby? Too prissy, said Polly. Too pimply, said Paul. Polly and Paul looked at Mum and Dad. doing here said Polly finally <coughs> we're here for the christening said mum there is christening said Polly it's next weekend said Paul mum looks like she wanted to sag to the floor dad looked like he wanted to fall down beside her we've come on the wrong day whispered mum you mean we have to go back said dad Yes, said Polly. Oh no, said Mum. Oh no, said Dad. Ugh, vomited Vera. Oh, well Polly, got to go. She slammed the door. 
You mean we can go home, said Henry, now? Yes, whispered Mum. Whoopee, screamed Henry. Hang on, Ralph, here I come.